Hey, this is Tuxedo Mark, and welcome to another episode of Vlogtron, the Voltron vlog. And I'm reviewing episode 6, the right arm of Voltron. Alright, uh, in this episode, it does seem to take place immediately after episode 5 because the people are slowly starting to come out of the caves and come to the castle to meet Talora at the beginning of the episode and she's talking to her people but then later on there's a, they, it seems the people are and, and they have a feast okay they're, they're gonna have a feast but all right first apparently the entire planet is invited which is ridiculous but apparently Alora had stored a bunch of food or she found a storeroom or, or something like that with food in it in the castle. But this is the new castle, not the old one. So I don't know. But anyway, um, there's this dumb plot where, uh, well, a dumb bit where Pidge gets on a mice's case for taking some cheese, but then he's like, yeah, it's okay, you guys are heroes too, we should be celebrating you. Okay, whatever. Um, so they have a banquet, they have like a feast, and, but then they're, they're, the episode kind of, there's this weird thing where it's like, they have to get people out of the caves to come to the castle. It's like, but they've already been shown coming to the castle and they've already had banquet but then suddenly they're trying to lure people out of the caves with promises of food. Anyway, it's odd, but anyway. Uh, then people are coming to the castle and Allura, she set up what looks like a hot dog cart or something, I don't know, it's even got like an umbrella. It's like this wooden cart with like a china bro, but anyway, she's handing out food. Um, this one old woman, well not old, but like, a, I guess a middle-aged woman or something. She's so grateful to Allura, she like kneels before her and looks into her eyes and her eyes are watering and then she takes her hand and kisses her on the hand. Okay. Um, Let's see, what, um, oh yeah, so, they've grown complacent, and, um, there, there's this scene at Galaxy Garrison, that, that's like the Galactic Alliance type of thing, I guess it's headquartered on Earth. Basically just a bunch of guys, a bunch of dudes, sitting around in a conference room, talking about what we already know, and with, with what's going on with uh, over on planet Eris, but there's no communications because there's a meteor shower. Okay. And let's just hope that when uh, Zorkon attacks, they'll be able to fight him off. Yeah. There's been like a few scenes on Galaxy Garrison already in previous episodes, and they really serve no purpose. It's just a bunch of dudes talking. They don't actually interact with the main characters at all. I guess it's just to show that there's like a government in charge, you know, back on Earth. Um, the real reason that uh, this scene was added, according to the wiki, is that it, uh, was used to fill out the episode after, you know, footage had to be cut, but I'll, I'll get to that. Um, anyway, the witch has come up with a new monster. She confronts Sven. There's a bunch of highly unusual cuts where I can't exactly tell what happened, but basically Sven dies. No, re really, seriously, he, he's dead. He's dead. Um, the episode, of course, tries to convince you otherwise. It's like, 
uh, you know, one of the guys is sobbing and he, he can't control his tears. And he's like, there's a hospital on plan, or there are good doctors on plan, whatever. And Sven, even though his, the camera's positioned so he's not like looking directly at the camera, he's just lying on the ground. But still, you can see part of his lips, and it's obvious he's not moving his lips at all. But he's like, get me there immediately, or something like that. No, I look. I looked up the article for the equivalent Japanese episode, and he he's dead. He's dead. He ain't coming back. Might be coming back on Voltron, but you know, he, he was dead on Go Lion. Um, they, they seem to have gotten over it pretty quickly, um, because then they're like uh, they're toasting the. Upcoming later return of Voltron. I don't know what they were probably just drinking in memoriam of him in the original episode. I don't know. But yeah, oh yeah, they drink wine. They don't say it's wine, but I mean, you see the bottle and it's got like a, um, a cork in it. And then later on, they're just, you know, they got the glasses filled with wine and, uh, Laura does this weird thing. She's like, she's raising her glass. She's like, yeah, I, I, she's drunk. She is drunk. Uh, but anyway, um, and, and somehow, uh, Zarkon has gotten a hold of this footage when he sees, uh, when the witch shows it to him. She's, she's like, you know, Laura is in contact with the king's spirit or whatever, and she knows the secret to forming Voltron. So I guess they want to kidnap her. I don't know. Um, so so that's why Zarkon forces attack the planet again. But you know, even if he didn't, they were awfully complacent. Think what well, I think Pidge even said that Zarkon's forces are defeated forever, based on what? Oh yeah. And when the witch takes the monster to go to, I guess from Planet Doom to uh, Planet Eris, she's like, it's only 10 million light years, we'll be there uh, just a bit, or something like, something like that. 10 million light years is like four times the distance between Earth and the Andromeda Galaxy. Do you have any idea how far that is? It is like literally impossible, even with like futuristic technology, to ever cross that distance in one lifetime. Remember? Star Trek The Next Generation, there was a season one episode called Where No One Has Gone Before. Uh, the tra first appearance of the Traveler and he accidentally causes the Enterprise to go to uh, the far side of uh, Triangulum, the galaxy known as M33. Alright, so at maximum warp, it would take them 300 years to get home. Now that's, that's, uh, okay, M33, uh, uh, I'm not sure exactly what, uh, how, how, where that is in relation to Andromeda and all of that stuff, but I mean, four times the distance between Earth and Andromeda has got to be further away than, you know, Galaxy M33, so... It's, it's like, it boggles the mind how they could write a line like that, but, um, anyway, uh, so, uh, they managed to defeat the, bag. I forget how exactly already, but, uh, they win, and, um, We're back to the mid-sized closing credit sequence again. 
But even still, I mean, you could see Laura standing on top of the blue lion in the uh, close and credit sequence. So I mean, it, it, they they definitely spoiled that she was going to be the the, pilot, the actual pilot. Um, so anyways, uh, Sven, he, he's gone on Voltron, at least for the foreseeable future. Um, and, uh, the next episode, I believe, is called The Lion Has New Teeth. Or something like that. So I'm guessing that's going to be the actual episode where uh, Alora officially joins the team. Like she takes over for Sven. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird that it use. I mean, the, the footage. It's kind of weird that even in, in the original Japanese version where he, he died that they seem to have gone over him very quickly, at least just judging by them drinking and not really looking all that sad or anything. By the way, the episode's called The Right Arm of Fultron, but Sven was the right leg, and... Uh, I think... The episode's title, and, and even when uh, Keith, I think, says that he was, that Sven was the right arm of Ultron, a lot of people think that's an error, and it probably is. Some people say it might refer to, like, Sven being the most important member, like, or, like, uh, Keith's, like, right hand, right hand man or something like that. And in fact, in the Japanese version, he does say you were like our right hand or something like that. So it's like a, it's like a, it's a metaphor, basically. Uh, somehow that got mutated into the right arm. But, you know, uh, so, so that explains that. But anyway, I look forward to, uh, watching the next episode and, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching.